Well, good day, tubes. How's she hanging? Pretty good here. Pretty good here. I, uh, I'm working a little bit on this bucket again here today, and I'm changing things a bit. I'm flipping it over actually, and going to run her the other way. I think. I uh, just I don't know why. It just seemed to work out better to go the other way, as in this way. I am referring to. So um, we actually had our cutting edge on this side. If you can see the old weld marks. Good thing I didn't weld her solid, eh? That's why I didn't weld her solid. <laughs> um, I'm actually, yeah, going to change and go this way. Um, for some reason, the way I had her planned out before, it just didn't kind of work out the way I wanted. So that's why I only tacked her. So now if we line up our, our buckets here, it's actually a little bit better profile looking. It's a little bit deeper out, so we're a little bit deeper this way. But we've got like pretty much the same edge coming up here. Pardon me. So I just cut all that off and uh, unfortunately lost, um, while well, on this end, my little ears. There's one of the ears. Oh man, I need to vacuum my floor too, don't I? So I lost my ears. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, so what I'm going to probably do here now is we'll cut a piece of pipe. And actually, same construction as this thing. We'll cut a piece of pipe to go over, overlaps like that a little bit. All right, and then we'll make a couple of, <coughs> pardon me, a couple of these <coughs> side brackets to kind of, uh, ow, that was sharp, to kind of, you know, encapsulate the bar as she comes. Out about here, whoa, somewhere, somewhere like that. Uh, so I guess the bar, that bar is going to be our next project on this, and uh, that might be fun to try to keep it centered, you know. And uh, be nice if I could clamp her somehow. But uh, but anyways, I guess first first we got to uh, cut a piece of pipe, measure and cut. There is our cut 47 and 1 8. I'm going to measure. Again. So we want to go to the outside 47 and an 8. And if I can get on this one 47 and 8. So pretty good there. So here we go. Oh, no, we don't go. <laughs> we need juice. We need juice. Juice. Juice will make the saw work better. Okay. I think we're good now. Everything's locked good. Last of all, and away we go. That sure does work good. I like this saw. Okay, let's see here. How the heck am I gonna hold this thing on here to weld it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, some of you are asking about that drill bit back in the back there. I cannot actually remember where I found that. I didn't buy that, I picked that up somewhere. Might have been like an old antique market or something. Um, or an old tractor show or something I got her at. I can't actually remember. So there is a split line right there. That might work to kind of help hold things. I could do that. Oh, it's got to actually go over. And I don't know how I'm going to keep this on here square, actually. Squarishly, that's a definite different trying to weld something round to something squarish. <laughs> um, it might go better if I turn the bucket around. Up 
Um, yeah, so this is gonna maybe not sort of go so nice, but still, I don't know where you're supposed to know where to weld it. Guess it all depends where you want your side plates to go and mount to, right? Uh huh. Nicer just to mount it back here, maybe. Maybe that's what I'll do. I got to uh, do a little bit of leveling here first from the old welds on the back side there. So let's. Uh, get out our air. That might be a better way to mount that thing. See, it's different because the bucket here, it's only, you know, 12 inches wide. And this is a lot wider trying to get that straight with the sock. dentistry. <laughs> this is going to do is uh, it's going to make me have to uh, cut a lot more out of my my uh, plates my mount plates to mount the thing to the thing here right so boy still how do you know where <laughs> where's level you could level it if you level the bucket I guess you could level this on here I do have a level but it's probably, the table's probably miles off anyway, so. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, this was the part I wasn't really looking forward to. Do it like that and use this line and make sure the line stays along the edge here, maybe. That might fall off there. Stay, is it? Darn it. Still not going to stay. It's too heavy on the front now. Oh, goodness. Well. kind of stuck with. It needs to kind of go right there. It's also not 
bad me right up top. Hmm. Well. No. I'm gonna maybe uh, see if I can clamp it. These clamps are gonna suck trying to hold this together. Look. These ones suck. Try to figure this out. There's no point in me filming this whole entire thing because it's going to be a slow, pain in the arse process. But uh, give me a second, and I'll see if we can get this thing on here. Okay, I think I think I got her on. Um, I, I don't know. Ow, I really got speared by something good on my finger or my hand. There. So these should probably get incorporated into this thing. So we'll need a like a gouge thing cut out of there and um, any of that are just behind um, just trying to think now that should be high lots enough there for the for our top hole so there won't be any interference with the bar here hopefully not Actually, pretty much right out here, I think. They pretty much have to go. I guess I could even just trace kind of like, well, not exactly that, but you know what I mean. I could trace the uh, outline here of. Or can I? Maybe that won't work. That's the level of our bucket. Whoa, well, for corn flakes. Guess technically I could just use a piece of pipe here. Um, far I want this to come out and over. Trying to think if that's going to work or not. It might, but I'm going to have to probably cut, Ooh, cut this a little deeper here. And then just weld it back in when I weld into this corner here and stuff. That should work for that. I'm a little bit worried about this not being super strong enough here. When I uh, see it's not, I keep thinking for digging, it's not for digging. So really, there's not going to be a whole pile of strain on there. It's just going to be, you know, curl up and then dump. It's not really for dig, 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 you know. So this is just. Leveling, leveling bucket. Um, well, I guess I could uh, cut this one out. That, or I could uh, maybe drill it. <laughs> could probably just drill that. What's the hex size? Was that an inch and a quarter, I think? inch and a quarter. I might just try drilling that just for fun. Oh, for corn friggin' sakes. <laughs> I've been struggling with these stupid friggin' brackets because these ones aren't exactly right for what I've got set up here. So the one I drilled totally didn't work. I don't know what the heck I was thinking, but it was fun drilling it, but that's, that's, that's not gonna work. 
and uh, you know I could have uh, ground it down more to go like like this to fit but then I'm lowering it too low I need it higher so and then I tried another one of just actually this might have worked but I don't know I didn't really like that I uh, redesigned it all again and uh, made a new card a couple of new cards there's our original I kind of liked the way that one was fitting but it wasn't quite right so I redesigned it and cut it and blah 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 and I got that one to kind of fit sort of where I'm liking I'm like yeah that might work but then uh, seeing this one would have been too far back you can see the difference there I wanted it ahead a little bit more and kind of up over the edge kind of like sort of what they got on set on this one it was sort of well if it was the right size of hole it would have worked but this this should be pretty much identical to the original except the big hole sorry the big hole that was cut out this is the one I copied her from originally there right so I'm like oh what the frick is going on here this is just not working out so we got, we got that rough cut out I think that'll work it's looking pretty good um, actually it's not really too bad at all it needs a little bit it needs to be uh, ground ground down but uh, that'll give me a, a rough dewy of what we're gonna do here so I will trace another one here and cut another one well we're drilling some holes here oh, I don't know why this one inch bit seems to take for freaking ever to drill through where I have my uh, uh, inch and three-eighths the bigger one here that will just plow through this stuff in no time at all I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with these one inch bits I'm on my third bit here now and uh, I just don't really understand why do like a, a fast time video for you here of this drilling and uh, we'll go from there so hopefully it's faster for you than it is for me <laughs> anyways here we go Wow, there was the entire problem right there. <laughs> I know exactly now why I was having so much trouble drilling before. And that hole there, I used absolutely no cutting oil at all on it. So what's happening? I know exactly what's happening. <coughs> there's such a small area in there that this thing's trying to cut out the chips aren't getting ripped out of there or pulled out 
So basically they're sitting in there and getting ground and ground and ground and ground, piling up, piling up, and it's not cutting anymore, right? That is exactly what the problem was there because I used absolutely no cutting oil there. And the bit's not, it's not hot, it's warm, but just slowly blowing air through that little vent here. Blew the chips all out everywhere, of course. But that worked phenomenal. That was way better. So there, there's the secret. We found the secret of the whole saws, finally. But it's funny, I've never had a problem with that other big one, but maybe it's big enough that it rips the chips out for you. I don't know. But uh, there we go. That was way better. No, no liquid at all. Oh, sorry. No liquid at all. All right, so the next tricky thing will be to find out where we're gonna mount these things. And uh, what I'm gonna do is measure 47, divided in my half is 23 and a half. So that's the exact center of the bucket. Um, hang on. I don't know if you can see that mark or not. Probably not. Anyways, 23 and a half center, so if we go, just double make sure, if we go from there to there, oh, we've got 23 and a half, go around you folks, to so there's 23 and a half, so I guess that's center. Now, where these things go, is the next tricky thing, because I need, uh, I think it's four inch, four inch gap in the middle. In the middle of those things for the arm to fit in there. So basically what we have to do is measure out four inch. It's pretty good there. There's one little spot here. One of those silly little spot welds here that I need to grind off so I can fit back there. So let me grab my grinder. Here are high dewies down. Won't take much to, to grind it off. So. probably get it kind of roughly hooked on like I'll hook these brackets on and then lower it to where I want it here because uh, there could be one little small variance that might you know if I happen to get one welded on like a little cockeyed or something the pins will never fit so we're actually pretty good there where the heck did I put my other I had two magnet deweys here somewhere what the heck? What the crap did I do with it? Well, I don't know what I do. Oh, it's out here. Right. So I don't know whether I'm going to get these on today or not. Um, I got this big spreader here in the way right now, and it's of course wicked heavy, but I gotta actually go out and spread some stuff. that's square. Um, I could check it with my guy right here. Not too bad. But I think I'm best to line it up on the machine and then weld it on. But, uh, so anyways, we've got, uh, 
there. This is really not the best tape for that. Oh, they must have been out of some air there. Yeah, I'm going to line it up on the machine. I think that would be the best way to, to do her. But uh, anyways, we're, we're slowly but surely getting here with this project. Um, it's kind of been a real pain in the rear end. This one's not really been that I find too much fun. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's a big one, I guess, so it's taking a lot longer time than I'm kind of wanting it to. But anyways, that's all, uh, about all we can do. So once we get her, you know, welded together, it'll be a little more awesome, but um, right now she's in tack form, I guess we'll call it, and I um, should probably tack on this bar a little better. I just hope I got her where I wanted her. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it looks nice, but you really don't know until you get her mounted what it's going to do. So, but uh, anyways, there we go. Well, I figured I might as well get her spread. So we got her hooked up. Um, I don't have much in here. This is all I got left. So, and uh, there is a big uh, augury thing in there. It'll actually break up the lumps pretty good, surprisingly. <laughs> Even as hard as they are. But uh, yeah, she's uh, she's a different kind of machine. It works pretty good. Um, Oh crap, what did this do under here now? This is something to do with uh, the way it opens or something. And this is a, a chute, so the more you pull this out, the wider the chute gets inside and the more it dumps through to the little actual broadcast spreader. And uh, this actually will spread about 40 feet, I think, when you really wind her up. Which is way too much more than I need, so they actually have this shield that goes around and it hits the shield and just kind of drops. Works pretty good. Just, uh, I need it to spread a little more, but it doesn't because of that shield. But then it would spread too far. So, yeah. But it's actually meant to uh, be tilted like a loader bucket and then drive into a pile, scoop it up, back out, and away you go. This is actually a loader bucket scraping edge thingy on here, right? Compared to the rest of it, which is all just rolled over stuff. So, uh, for unfortunately, I don't have. The facility here to try it for scooping but that would be kind of sweet but uh, yeah so she's uh, she's good to spread I just got a couple areas back there which is a little dangerous which I'm gonna go drop some on here and then uh, that'll probably dump her out and then uh, oh maybe tomorrow or something I'll run to uh, TSC actually was <laughs> the cheapest for salt I couldn't believe it so um, I don't really know what I can show you while I'm doing this because it's, you know, basically sits kind of where it is and I just use my control and my thumb and it just, um, you know, sends pressure through and then into the, there's a hydraulic motor under there. You know, that turns the chute, uh, turns the, the spreader and the agitator and everything in there and then it just falls out to the spreader and pfft, out and away she goes. So. It's kind of not really that interesting and really I can't kind of show you where and where, what's going on here because it'll be way down in the front you won't see nothing anyway so I'd be best to have someone filming for me but uh, anyways this uh, this too I think was a flow control you can turn this up or down here to uh, adjust how fast the motor turns down there I think I got her set of a half speed there seemed to be pretty good um, I think that's what that was as a flow control uh, but anyways, I'll go spread this out, and then uh, I'll park her, I guess. Well, I'm just about empty, I can tell, because uh, that thing inside starts banging on the drum part of this thing. So I just got a little bit left here. We'll show you kind of how it works a little bit. Uh, so I just drive the tractor as normal, and then push the bottom button when I want salt.
that's about her for today uh, I got this kind of cleared here maybe we'll do that tackle that tomorrow um, today actually I've got to run up to John Deere uh, I don't need any John Deere parts funny enough but what I am getting is the uh, replacement cutting edges for this guy now this one is yet reversible I can take the bolts off flip it and put it back on but uh, I was just looking at it the other day I'm like wow this thing I've used her a fair bit, I guess. Pushing snow and stuff, and uh, uh, I just looked at it the other day because I'm like, whoa, this is, this uh, this gap from the bottom of this bolt down, and this bottom of the bolt down is, is quite a bit less than it used to be. So I'm like, oh, maybe I better look at that because what would end up happening is uh, if you let it go too far, she'll start actually wearing into your blade down here and you don't want that to happen. So I still got maybe half an inch. Hopefully it'll get me through for this year. And then I can flip it. But I thought, oh, you know what? This thing's this thing's using them up pretty hard here. I might get a couple put in stock. So uh, John Deere guys actually sell stuff for HLA. You can't buy the HLA stuff to their direct end user. I actually emailed these guys and ask them and they're like no 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 you'd have to get it through a dealer where's where are you at i'm like i'm like blah 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 and he's like oh this is the closest one here i'm like yeah i'm not using that guy <laughs> i know that guy down in south of me here i'm like no 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 i'm not using him uh actually i called the guys i didn't want to use we'll say and uh they were quite rude uh when i was calling around and looking for parts or uh prices on that little 008 they sell kubota there too and they were quite rude to me i'm like oh okay I won't buy it here then. How's that? You know, it was it was too much of a job for him to go and... Hmm. Okay, so that call that just come in there was the... Uh, there's a place in town that sell, sells salt and soil and uh, stuff, other things, chips, wood chips, all that kind of stuff, right? And uh, still TSC is cheaper <laughs> for, for a bag, so they uh, didn't seem to want to too much you know so I'm like okay um, hmm I even asked her that's the best you can do eh oh oh yeah yeah oh and they stopped making the 40 kilogram bags now I'm like yeah of course they did <laughs> but looks like TSC might be getting her so maybe tomorrow I'll just I'm gonna maybe just go get like 10 bags for right now not not a whole skid um because we are like you know Getting towards the end of January, February, nee, March, maybe a little bit, and then after that you won't need it, right? So I'll uh, maybe just now get it as I need it instead of getting a whole skid because I kind of really don't want to be left over with, you know, 27 bags, you know, through the summer kind of thing because storing that will kind of suck. So um, you have to keep it dry, and it's in like, you know, the, the plasticky bags should be fine, but. Um, I think maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just get some TSC there and, and drive on because she wanted with tax delivery for 30, 40 kilogram bags, which is about 80 pounds roughly, uh, 417 bucks or something like that. I'm like, whoa, really? I don't think so. That's, that's crazy, you know? But the one guy I got the tote from, he's like, well, if you can, if you can buy her or get her by the truck, it's way cheaper. I'm like, well, yeah, it's way cheaper, but then you need somewhere to store that, you know? You'd have to have a separate building with nothing else in it because if you leave that salt, say, in a shop, like in my shop, it's getting, you know, hot and cold and hot and cold and, we'll say, fermenting into the air. It's uh, going to make everything kind of go rusty in the shop. If I don't want that, so no thanks. It's just like living by the by the ocean. Everything will turn rusty on you, you know. So um, there's all the salt in the air. So I didn't want that. So I guess we'll have to do, uh, do the bags. And hopefully if it's sealed in the bag, it shouldn't, you know, do that salt thing where it's going to 
leach through the air and rust everything. Because I don't want that. <laughs> that would suck. Um, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, I got a couple of uh, cutting edges ordered John Deere. I gotta go out and pick them up. But um, I'll maybe show you those tomorrow or something. I don't think I'll do a video up there and stuff because I think we uh, are gonna go up and uh, do the kids' homework night somewhere up there. That's what we do. We, you know, Wednesday. <coughs> <laughs> oh, I hope this isn't a cold start. And, uh, I just had a, one of those coffee things all day, you know, so it's like, no, <laughs> almost through winter, no. But uh, anyways, we're going to go up and uh, pick those up and then do the kids' homework night thing. So anyways, I guess that's about it for today. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get uh, working on the mountain, those things. And uh, I better, I better uh, zip on that... Uh, bar a little better too because it's just two little welds holding her on there it's not going to be very good if I pick it up like that with that attached like that so but anyways uh, have a good night thanks for watching I think I might run inside and grab a drink of something and uh, some of those cold pilly things that help you with you know cold stuff and actually they, everybody's like, oh that's such a load of hooey those never work I'm telling you they do if you can catch your cold early enough as soon as you start feeling like something happening, take a couple right away. And like the next morning, it's gone. I've had that like three times this year already. And it's been just kind of like today, where it's just like, mm -hmm, I'm here. And I go, mm -hmm, no, you're not. I take a couple of pills and then it goes away, right? So um, it's the cold effects I take. They do have like cold assist pills. Don't get them. Get the best ones, get the cold FX. They're really expensive, but they do really work. And I don't really know what's in them, but uh, <laughs> I think there's a lot of echinacea and crap, and I guess that gets in you and fights that bacteria or something. I don't know, but I can feel it in my face a bit, you know, so I'm gonna probably pop a couple of those, and then uh, we'll be hopefully all good by morning. I'll let you know, though. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, we gotta get rocking when the kids get home here, and it's 3.05 now, so. They'll be, uh, they'll be home in about 20 minutes, and then off we go. So I'll go take my pills, have a drink of water, and um, away we go. So anyways, thanks again for watching today. Uh, we'll catch you tomorrow doing some more bucket work. Oh. I haven't got a picture of it, I don't think, on my phone. I, I, I thought of another bucket. Actually, somebody sent me a picture the other night. I, I do apologize because I can't remember names and stuff, but sent me a picture. Hang on, maybe I can find it on through the Facebook here. Hang on a sec. Ah, uh, there it is. It's kind of like a ripping tooth bucket kind of thing. I don't kind of really know what I would use something like that for, but I think it would be a pretty cool, challenging project. <laughs> you would have to uh, figure out that piece in the center, how an arrow to start it, and then how wide to make it go, and then start bending that around your thing. That's, uh, I think that's, boy, I don't know. That looks like a model. It's a really good model, but maybe it's not. I don't know. Deer, deer. Uh, but anyways, it's a pretty sweet, pretty sweet looking little bucket right down to one tooth. But um, like I say, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be all right, because I guess you could rip it stuff and then try to scoop it in the bucket and then take it away, you know, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I, like, I did uh, some ripping there uh, a couple years ago in the winter, and it was just really sucky because it was really deep frost. <laughs> and uh, it would have been nice with a little bit of a bucket. You could have scooped a bit of crap and then got rid of it, but, you know, because the hole kept filling up with these ripping chunks and stuff. Um, pretty sweet, though. There's kind of another sort of picture of one. Basically, it's got, like, vampire tooth bucket on the front there, and then into like the bucket shape. I think that's kind of sweet. Be it all out of pressure, you have to really make sure you weld really good right up in here. Cause there'll be a lot of pressure put on that little spot there. Oh boy. Oh yeah, but that's that's a pretty sweet looking bucket. I like that. That might be something kind of cool to make just for like a little fun model-y kind of thing, you know, like some of the little mini buckets I've made. Uh, that might be kind of fun for that, but for me, practically, I don't really know if I would really have a good use for something like that. Um, but maybe one day we'll make a mini bucket, you know, like a desktop bucket or something like that, and, uh, you know, just for fun. 
smaller scale stuff would be kind of nice and this sort of bigger kind of scale is getting getting more challenging it seems lately so um, which is good it gets your brain working and stuff you know but uh, yeah so anyways I better head her out uh, kids will be home soon I haven't been inside yet so have a good night thanks again for watching and tomorrow come on back and we'll do some more um, getting that thing actually maybe hooked on to the machine and see how it looks hopefully everything is good where we want it but uh, we'll see so anyways have a good night thanks again for watching and we'll catch you in the morning